If your motto is, bigger is better, here's your dog. I would imagine that even walking down the street with a three-month-old English Mastiff, you would get stopped constantly. And I would imagine also that many of those comments would be, is it a horse or is it a pony? These dogs are massive. Yeah, the Great Dane and the Irish Wolfhound might be taller, but they can't compare to the English Mastiff in sheer mass. The Guinness Book of World Records recognized a 343-pound English Mastiff named Zorba as the world's heaviest living dog back in 1989. He was eight feet from head to tail, and he was the size of a small donkey. Sure, that's an extreme, but the average English Mastiff weighs as much as the average human between 140 and 200 pounds. Hey, what do you think you want? Has to consider, uh, you know, the large expense of keeping them and feeding them. All this volume combined with an instinctively protective nature makes the English Mastiff an ideal watchdog. This colossal canine is the oldest English breed and its history goes way, way back. I mean, these dogs have been around since the beginning of dog time. It's believed that Phoenician traders brought the ancestors of the English Mastiff to Britain around 500 B.C. And in 55 B.C., Caesar makes mention of them fighting valiantly next to the uh, English soldiers when he invaded Britain. But for all their brute force, these mammoth creatures are more likely to lick you than lunge at you. <laughs> They're very easygoing, very laid back, just kind of like couch potato type dog. Just make sure you have a big couch. Heavy boned and muscular, English Mastiffs take up a lot of space. And that's quite a face, isn't it? The English Mastiff has wide set eyes, a wrinkled forehead, and a very broad head. He's got that head the size of a polar bear. And this short-coated canine comes in three distinct colors, fawn, apricot, and brindle. The Pearson family has one of each. They share their suburban Seattle home with three English Mastiffs, Bea, Boaz, and their puppy, Cowboy. Boaz is the middle child and plays a special role in the family. He's a seeing-eye companion. But the Pearson's vision is fine. It's Bea that's blind. Boaz is very protective of Bea. Uh, it's nothing that we've ever had to train him for. I think he just instinctively knows there's something different about her. She needs some help. With only 10% of her sight left, two and a half year old Bea gets around largely by smell. She's most at ease indoors, where smells are more consistent, but outside, her confidence wanes. Good shit. She keeps her nose close to the ground, stays close to the fence, or just stops in her tracks until her trusted companion makes an appearance. Boaz is um, definitely Bea's security. We call it on duty. He knows when it's his time to be taken care of Bea. This English Mastiff is 170 pounds of gentle guidance. When Bay is alone, he watches her. When she wanders too far astray, he nudges her back. And when the Pearson's boys get too rambunctious with her, he breaks it up. They call him the fun police. But he'll run over and bark and say, okay, everybody calm down. Boaz senses that Bea's vision is limited. The Pearsons knew something was wrong when Bea was just a pup. She was having a little trouble navigating the stairs, very unsure of her footing, and we thought, well, Mastiffs, we heard, are lazy. Maybe she's just being lazy. She wasn't. Tests revealed that Bea has an inherited eye disease common among English Mastiffs called canine multifocal retinopathy. Dogs with CMR have lesions on their retinas that can obstruct vision. Most dogs with CMR don't go blind, but Bea's problems were too intense, and surgery could not help. Good eyes. When the Pearsons received Bea's diagnosis, they had second thoughts about her breeder. There was no contract in place. There was no home visits. There was no evaluation of us. Fortunately, Tim came across a story about a blind horse that found new freedom when teamed up with a sighted horse. 
So when I read that article online, I thought, well, if it works for horses, why wouldn't it work for mastiffs? This time, the Pearsons located a reputable English mastiff breeder who did thorough health tests and evaluated Bea's special needs. She selected Boaz to be her companion because of his sensitive and observant nature. For Boaz, playtime is less important than Bea's whereabouts. He always waits by the door until she is safely inside. Good. That she lives with three dogs still surprises Susan, who was cautious about bringing a new dog into the family. Taz was the family's first dog, and first loves are hard to get over. He was a shepherd mix, very outspoken, very outgoing, was just very happy to please in whatever it was he was doing. When Taz got up there in years, he went into kidney failure, and it was Susan who was forced to put him down. I stayed with him the whole time. He was just at peace. And so that was that was a good way for, for me to kind of say goodbye to him and let him go. <laughs> but new dogs have brought new life into the family. Bea may present challenges, but with Boaz by her side, the Pearsons know that their eldest English Mastiff is going to be okay. As long as Boaz is with her, I think that she's happy. <laughs> You might think an English Mastiff would need a house the size of a castle, but this animal is sedentary enough that an average-sized home will do, and a daily walk around the neighborhood will keep this slow-moving dog exercised. But if you're a neat freak, beware. They have big, big feet, so they track in all this dirt, and they slobber constantly. English Mastiffs have their share of health issues. The breed can suffer from conditions like hip dysplasia, bloat, obesity, bone cancer, and, of course, eye diseases. Their life expectancy is 10 to 12 years. Grooming them is very easy, but bathing them, well, that could be another story. They're so big, so... You might have trouble getting them in the bathtub. English Mastiffs respond moderately well to obedience training, but you'll need some patience because these dogs don't do anything quickly. English Mastiffs are docile and devoted to their caretakers, but are not recommended for families with small children simply because of their enormous size, which creates other disadvantages. They poop a lot. To sum it up, the English Mastiff is a gentle giant, but it's definitely not for everyone. These tremendous dogs do not require much exercise, but they do take up a lot of space. Their size makes them prone to a range of health problems. They can suffer from eye problems, bloat, and dysplasia, but their grooming requirements are minimal. Training them requires patience, and as a family pet, they are protective and loving, but are not a safe choice for families with small children. If you're the type who likes to supersize it, though, you don't need to look much further. Life with an English Mastiff is a major commitment and can also bring major rewards. <laughs> Still to come on Dogs 101, the vet said this dog was on his last legs, but he turned into a hero. And this is the one breed that many owners litter box train. And now it's time to play Pick the Pooch. Which sighthound is considered the tallest of all the dogs? Can you guess which breed it is? The answer when we come back. <laughs>